we at the Canadian Medical Hall of Fame are going to pay all of you a compliment now. You are deeper, wiser and smarter than you have ever been in your life so far. Think about it. For the first several years of your life in school, you learnt the basics. You learnt colours and shapes. You learnt to add and subtract. You learnt alphabets and how to make sentences. And we're just beginning to have an idea of the world around you. But when you became a teenager, your brain kicked into high gear. If you've noticed, the way you think has become more complicated and yet more interesting. You've gone beyond simply memorizing and imitating things. You discuss and you debate. You have opinions. You're more curious than you've ever been. You're starting to think about relationships, long-term plans, careers, the environment, and so much more. Could it be that you're somehow learning and memorizing things differently now? What is your brain doing so differently now compared to what it was doing before you began your teenage years? Here's the thing. Every time you learn something new, something changes in your brain, specifically within cells in your brain known as neurons. There are almost 90 billion neurons in the brain, each on average has 7,000 connections with other neurons. Every time you learn something, neurons take that information and share it with other neurons through these connections. All your information of events, words, images, smells, taste, emotions, etc. are stored as memories in collections of neurons in different regions of the brain. Keep learning something over and over again for example, playing the guitar, and connections between neurons grow stronger over time. Essentially, when you are becoming better at playing the guitar, it simply means that your brain is becoming more efficient in retrieving information from those particular neurons in your brain that have stored all those guitar lessons. You've heard the phrase, practice makes perfect, right? Well, keep practicing and these connections will grow stronger. Stop practicing and these connections grow weaker. In other words, how we learn can modify connections between neurons, much like plastic or play-doh. This is where we get the term neuroplasticity. During your teenage years, multiple things are happening in your brain. It is producing new neurons at a much faster rate than it was when you were young. There are millions of connections forming between all the billions of neurons once again at a rate much faster than it was when you were young. And yes, the teenage brain is very, very responsive to neuroplasticity. But because of all those new neurons and millions of connections, the way you're learning and thinking is changing drastically. New learning and memory depends on many things. Are you paying attention to the new information? Are you motivated enough? For example, some remember hockey scores better than math equations. And so, how you learn and why you learn is also as important as what you learn. That is why, for example, you need to learn a math equation many, many times to remember it but you never forget your first kiss. Now you might be wondering, how does all this information relate to the Canadian Medical Hall of Fame or CMHF? Did you know that two CMHF laureates are responsible for discovering how we learn, how memories form and neuroplasticity? Their names are Donald Hebb and Max Sinader. It was Donald Hebb who discovered that when neurons communicate with each other often, their connections become stronger. In other words, neurons that fire together, wire together. He is often credited as being the first scientist ever to discover and explain how we learn and remember things by pointing out the biology of neurons and the connections between them. 
Max and Adder showed how collections of neuron in different brain regions modify connections between them based on how we learn, when we learn, and how much we learn. He discovered that the most effective way to teach people something new is to catch them young because the greatest neuroplasticity happens in younger people compared to adults. He also figured out the chemical and biological processes to explain this neuroplasticity. Both Hebb and Sinader changed how we approach learning and memory and how we teach our children. They taught us just how important the environment is for neuroplasticity. In fact, their discoveries have helped schools the world over create effective teaching strategies for young children and, of course, teenagers. Remember that point about how learning and memory depends on things like attention and motivation? Well, Hebb and Sinader did a lot of research showing how our external environment influences how we learn and remember things. It means, for example, that our friends, our families, the food we eat, the sports we play, our hobbies shape, in part, who we are, what we learn, and how we behave with others. Thanks to their initial work, we later found out that healthy environments actually produce more neurons in the brain and encourage more neuroplasticity. And we know how both of these are important in us becoming better learners and improving our capacity to remember and retain information. Both scientists emphasized the importance of a healthy body and healthy relationships with friends and family in creating an effective learning environment for young people. In fact, we have a lot of studies from around the world that show that activities such as playing outside are much better for brain development and a healthy body compared to sitting inside staring at screens. <laughs>